should you journal for the purpose of improving your Spanish? Journaling is one of the best ways to improve your Spanish. Why? Because you not only put into practice what you have learned, but also, and most importantly, because you connect emotionally with what you are writing. You are connecting emotionally with Spanish, with the language you are learning. A personal journal is an ideal environment in which to become. It is a perfect place for you to think, feel, discover, expand, remember, and dream. Journaling in Spanish is so important because what you write is relevant to you. The words you use are the words you need to express your soul, your needs, your heart. And because you connect emotionally with those words, they will remain burned in your memory. Pretty cool, huh? The key to being able to express in a manner that feels and sounds authentic passes through not only understanding who we are in our mother language, but also in our target language. We are different in every language you speak, and in a way, when we learn a new language, we are creating a part of ourselves in that language. So what better way to explore our voice in that language than journaling? Journaling, introspective journaling in Spanish about anything and everything that crosses your mind is a fantastic practice to connect with yourself, understand who you are and what you think and how you feel. But if you are doing it mainly to improve your Spanish, you may feel that's a waste of time, even though it never is. That's why having a guided, focused journaling experience will combine self-expression and self-discovery in Spanish with the practice of those tricky Spanish grammar structures that cause you so many headaches. One of those structures is ser and estar. So in this video I will share with you uh, 10 prompts for different levels that you can use to practice ser and estar in Spanish along with an explanation, a grammar explanation brief just to um, guide and explain why you are using ser and estar and how you can do it in your journaling um, practice. So for beginners, the first prompt is actually divided in three questions um, and these questions are ¿Quién soy? ¿De dónde soy? ¿Cómo soy? ¿Quién soy? ¿Who am I? ¿De dónde soy? Um, where am I from? And ¿Cómo soy? What do I look like? What's my appearance? And here you are going to use ser. Let me explain why. We use ser to talk about who we are in essence. That is to talk about our identity from nationality, gender, profession, um, physical appearance, etc. All those things that describe you go with ser because ser is the essence um, that goes with identity. So in line with um, the idea that we use ser to describe essential characteristics of something, someone, so if you want to describe, for example, your house, or you want to describe the place you live, your neighborhood, or um, your, your room, or space, your favorite park, anything, if you want to describe the essential characteristics of this thing or this place, you will use ser. Prompt number two. ¿Cómo estoy en este momento y por qué? ¿Dónde estoy y cómo es este lugar? So again, two more questions. ¿Cómo estoy en este momento y por qué? So how do I feel in this moment and why? And ¿Dónde estoy y cómo es ese lugar? Where am I and how it is? Uh, and, and what does this place look like? So here we have a combination. So let me explain first the main verb you will be using is estar because um, 
you want in this question, in the first question, you want to talk about the state of you, what's your mood, in what state you are in. So you need estar because estar is state. So anything that is mood or susceptible to change or result of a change goes with estar. Mood, for example, doesn't identify anybody, right? Mood is something we experience as a result of an event or situation. Then mood goes with estar. However, if a certain mood is constant in the person, that is that this person is all the time, or the, their natural state is this mood, then you would use es, uh, ser sorry, to um, describe the identity or the essence of this person, the nature of this person. So the same goes when we talk about things. For example, um, cleanliness or dirtiness is considered a state. Mi casa está limpia, my house is clean, because it doesn't help you identif identify the essence of the house, but it, it helps you to um, recognize or to see how um, the, the appearance or the state of this house in this particular moment. And finally, in the second question, I am asking you about where you are in this moment. Donde estás y cómo es este lugar. So the place you are doesn't describe who you are, so you use estar. So to, this, to talk about your location or the location of something goes with estar. But when you start describing this place, you will use ser because you will describe in maybe a mixture of um, things that um, describe the essence and nature of this place and also things that describe this place in this particular time and then you will use estar. And finally, the third prompt for beginners is describe el lugar donde vives. So describe the place you live in. And here you can describe your house, your neighborhood, your city, your village, your country, anything. But here you will hopefully use a mix, again, a mixture of ser and estar. Ser to describe the essential characteristics of this place and estar if you are talking about location, where this place is located, and also if you are talking about the state of this place, if it is dirty or if it is noisy um, in this moment for that particular reason, or then you will use estar. But if the place is noisy all the time, and that's an essential characteristic, you will use ser. Now let's move on to intermediate prompts and I have three more prompts. First one. ¿Qué está por hacer en mi vida o en mi día? ¿Qué está por hacer en mi vida? Or ¿Qué está por hacer en mi día? ¿Qué está por hacer? What needs to be done? So what is in my to-do list or in my bucket list that I want or have to do but I haven't done yet? Yeah? So, estar por hacer, um, it expresses the idea that it is yet to do, to be done. Yeah, but I want to do it or I need to do it, but I haven't done it yet. So, ¿qué está por hacer? Second prompt, ¿qué es importante o esencial para mí y por qué? ¿Qué es importante o esencial para mí y por qué? So, we can express an opinion in Spanish with either ser or estar, depending on the stru structure. A very common impersonal uh, structure that introduces opinion is es importante, or es fundamental, es esencial, es terrible, es nefasto. Es, and then the adjective that describes, es importante. We use ser and followed this structure you can use either the infinitive or the subjunctive with que. So for example, es esencial vivir en el campo. So it is essential, es esencial para mí, it is essential for me to live in the countryside. 
por es importante para mí que mi pareja sea buena persona. So it is important for me that my partner is a good person. And the third prompt for the intermediate is ¿Qué cosas o comportamientos están bien o están mal para mí? ¿Y por qué? So what behavior or what, what things um, are good or are bad for me, in my opinion, and why? So estar bien o estar mal express a, a judgment, an opinion. So it's good or it's correct or it is bad or wrong. And also they can be followed by infinitive or subjunctive with que. Está bien trabajar, it's good work. Um, or está mal que me llames tan tarde. So it's wrong that you call me so late. And finally, let's go with the prompts for the advanced levels. Here we have four. ¿Qué estoy por hacer y por qué? ¿Qué estoy por hacer y por qué? It is used to talk about what someone is about to do, but also to talk about what someone has the intention or would like to do. For example, mi vecino de arriba tiene una fiesta en su apartamento y está haciendo mucho ruido. No puedo dormir y le digo a mi pareja, estoy por subir y decirle que baje el volumen. Yeah. In this situation, I'm not expressing that I am about to go out uh, and, and tell him to turn the volume down, but that I intend to do it and I want to do it I am get, uh, and I am getting close to do it. Next prompt for advance. ¿Para qué está el dinero? Es decir, ¿para qué sirve? ¿Para qué está el dinero? ¿Para qué sirve? Estar para it is used to talk about the use of something. For example, el dinero está para ahorrarlo o la casa está para vivirla. So money is to be saved or um, a house is to be lived in. Tercer pie, so third prompt. Piensa en los momentos en que no estás para bromas. No estás para bromas. Explica cómo te encuentras y cómo describes tu estado de ánimo. So, no estar para expresses the idea of not being in the mood of something. So, no estar para bromas is I'm not in the mood for jokes. And finally, the last prompt with um, ser o estar for advanced is en qué estás hoy. ¿Qué ocupa tu tiempo y tu mente? ¿En qué estás hoy? ¿Qué ocupa tu tiempo y tu mente? So, estar en, en algo, estar en ello, means to be on it or be working or handling it. So, um, yo estoy en preparar un podcast. I'm working on, I'm on recording a podcast. Estoy en la grabación de un podcast. So these are 10 prompts you can use to practice ser and estar in Spanish in your journaling practice. So as you can see, journaling can be a laser focused um, task to practice your grammar in combination with the self-expression and self-exploration that we accomplish with journaling in any language. So if you are interested in knowing more about journaling for your Spanish improvement or for your Spanish practice, head to my website, you have the link below, and there you will find some um, printable worksheets for, with prompts and ideas to write, and also you will find uh, journaling courses for Spanish students. And that's all for me for the moment. I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.